Living in upstate New York, I often get asked, how do we grow food for the winter? And people ask us if we have some way of extending our growing season through the cold winter months, which for us is pretty much November through May. So today I wanna to show you guys our pantry tour, all the things that right now we have canned, dried, cured. So without further ado, here is our pantry tour. There's a common assumption that if you grow in a cold climate like we do, your short growing season means that you really can't grow enough of your own food to be self-sufficient in any ways. But I think that's totally false and as you can see you can grow a lot of your own food no matter where you live by using creative methods of preserving and curing and freezing and all the good stuff that we now have access to. Now normally we don't have all of our canned goods up here on the kitchen counter or else we have no counter space. So we brought them up from the basement to the kitchen to show you guys what we preserved over the summer and fall. This past summer was our second growing season and we grew a lot of produce. So much so that we were able to preserve a lot through the winter. The stuff you see here isn't everything we preserved. We also have a lot of things in the freezer like frozen peppers and hash browns more tomatoes we even have some homemade pesto and frozen juice that we made from juicing our produce and then downstairs we also have a few buckets of potatoes ready to cook whenever we are in the mood for potatoes which is pretty much all the time i'm going to start by showing you guys what we have cured that we're going to be needing to eat over the next couple months and then i'll show you the canned goods that we have about a year to eat and some of the dried things that I used our wonderful dehydrator to help me with. Next to me, we have some honey nut squash. These are miniature butternuts, um, really, really flavorful, probably my favorite squash and one of my favorite things to grow. These are actually gonna go bad pretty soon and they're already softening, so we're gonna go ahead and cook those up this week. We also have these pumpkins. We have one, two, three, four, four of these blue-green pumpkins. I haven't actually eaten these yet, but they're supposed to have a really delicious flavor, and I'm hoping to make lots of yummy pumpkin soups with them. They seem to be cured really well and should store a quite a bit longer. Buttercup squash. Buttercup squash is kind of like a cross between a butternut and a potato. Pie pumpkins and a more medium-sized pumpkin. A handful of spaghetti squash. I'm actually gonna be making spaghetti squash for dinner tonight with our homemade pesto and some more pumpkins. Now this is our onion stores for the year. This is after we used a lot of onions to make salsa and tomato sauces and vegetable broth and all kinds of other things and we've been using them for the past six months. So you can see we have a fair amount of, of onions left, over, well over a hundred, and this should last us all the way through the winter. Got more pumpkins because I didn't have room on that side and and some more, some more spaghetti squash and pumpkins over here too. So let's go ahead and we'll move on over to the canned goods. Canning is a ton of work and it's super time consuming. And every year I'm about ready to be done with it by the time that fall rolls around but I did get quite a bit done this year by myself while working full time and taking classes in the evening, pretty much constantly canning on the weekends. So I'll show you guys what we have here. Quite a bit of it was done for the first time this year. We hadn't done it before and we have a lot to put us through the next few months. Most of our canned goods were done through a process called hot water bath canning, which doesn't actually involve pressurizing. Um, instead, it heats up the jar for a certain amount of minutes in boiling water and that kills all the bad bacteria and then when you get the good seal from the lid, it doesn't let in any bacteria while it's stored. We have some straight ground cherry jam. This stuff is so good. It takes a lot of ground cherries to make though. 
two jars left of maple syrup for the year. Um, we made maple syrup last March and we'll be making it again in just a couple months. So it almost got us through the entire year. I've got a whole row of crushed tomatoes, a row of spicy relish and bread and butter pickles, another row of bread and butter pickles because we had so many cucumbers all at once. Um, this row right here is all vegetable broth. So actually, we made our own vegetable broth. We made seven quarts of vegetable broth. And you can actually use this in replace of oil as well as to make all kinds of other things. By far, more than anything else, we just have tons of tomato products. I have eight quarts of spaghetti sauce, about 10 quarts of roasted tomato sauce, which can be used for soup, sauce, or salsa. And I even made tomato paste. I have a video about this if you're interested in how I did this. And I made tomato paste specifically to make homemade ketchup to go with our homegrown potatoes in the form of hash browns and french fries and home fries and all the yummy things you can make potatoes with. This year I grew tomatillos for the first time for the sole purpose of making salsa verde. So I made about six quarts of salsa verde and it's so good you can put it on anything it's so sweet from the natural sweetness of tomatillos and you can add lots of heat and uh, saltiness and it's just i totally recommend growing tomatillos to make some home homemade salsa verde i even have about two cups of dried black beans which is a very small amount from what i had hoped for but it's a lot better than nothing and Next year, we're going to be prepping our soil a little bit better for growing beans. Um, so we should have quite a few jars of dried black beans next year. I even have a couple jars of uh, dried soybeans with the goal of making homemade soy milk, tofu, tempeh, um, all those yummy things. So let's talk a little bit about the dried spices and seasonings. I have a big jar of lemon balm that I'm planning to use for making herbal teas. A jar of tomato powder. I use the discarded skins and seeds from coring tomatoes through making sauces and tomato paste and things like that. And so I took the seeds and the skins and I dehydrated them and then I turned them into a delicious powder that can add a lot of flavor as well as nutrient density to foods. We've got pineapple sage for herbal tea and a lot of lavender, which smells amazing and can be used in baking and cooking. A jar of garlic powder. Mint, I love mint tea, especially before bed. It's really good for your digestion as well. And a jar of cayenne, which is much more than we'll need this year. So this should last us for a good couple of years. But I am planning on growing cayenne peppers again because they are incredibly prolific and I want to make some hot sauce next year. I also have... What is this? Oh. I also have about a pint of dried sage. Some rosemary which is really good if you're making like a vegan um, cheesy sauce rosemary actually adds a natural cheesy flavor oregano um, bee balm for tea thyme this is what is this oh this is a poblano um, a dried poblano powder we've also got homemade paprika, which I already have in a jar, and a bag full, a rose con pollo pepper seasoning, some dried calendula flowers, some chamomile flowers, hibachi pepper seasoning. You can also see in front of me right here, um, we still have a lot of garlic to eat through throughout the winter. And this is after I planted the majority of the garlic out in our garden. And some little baby, some baby onions. One of my favorite things to grow that I didn't grow a whole lot of this year um, and I forgot to bring it inside, a fox got a bunch of it, was glass gem corn and blue corns. So we have just a few ears of corn here, but you can actually pop this over the stove and make popcorn, or you could grind it into a, power, grind it into a flour and make um, homemade tortillas. There's lots of things you can do with this. It also makes a great decoration in the fall, and it's just really beautiful to look at. I'll show you real quick what our freezer looks like. And, um, give you an idea of how much more food we just have tucked away in the freezers. 
So this is a bag full of pesto that was frozen into ice cubes and stored. So many bags of green beans. Homegrown broccoli that was frozen. Loads of frozen peppers. Here are some hash browns in this cookie sheet. And frozen curly cabbage here. Tons of tomatoes back here. This freezer is really full and we have another one in the garage that's full as well. Oh, and I didn't even mention the food that we have in the fridge. We still have a lot of radishes in the fridge and actually still in the garden. A number of fermented vegetables in the fridge like sauerkraut. So all these jars up here are fermented foods or foods that we've already opened, just haven't finished yet. The big jar of fermented pickles back there. A container full of French breakfast radishes and a bag full of watermelon radishes. Here's some uh, sauerkraut made from purple cabbage and I have another jar from some green cabbage. You can see we still have cabbage heads in the fridge here. There's a nice big head of cabbage and a very good sized Kalibos cabbage. There's our pantry tour and uh, hopefully next year it will be even bigger. Although this was quite a bit of work and I can't really anticipate having time to do even more than what we did back here. But it certainly does feed us through the winter, not completely of course, but probably between 40 and 50% of the types of things we're buying at the store, especially when you add in the potatoes we have downstairs, the onions, the garlic, the squash, all the frozen greens and frozen peppers and canned goods. It really goes a long way. And that's after we ate probably 80% of our meals from the garden all the way through the summer. So it makes a big dent in our budget. It's super amazing for our health and it's incredibly empowering to grow your own food.